See? So I'm here at a dairy farm in New York, and I am learning how to milk cows. <laughs> e oh, fuck. <laughs> I just got shit all over me. The smell right here is is pretty intense. Porque sin mexicanos no tenemos leche, ¿no? Sí. When we think about immigration being a controversial issue, we usually think of places like Arizona and Texas, but actually New York State has become such a hotbed for immigration enforcement. And the main reason is that agriculture and dairy farms rely on immigrant labor so much. Immigrants play a critical role in the American food production system. Chances are the food you ate today was planted, harvested, and packed by workers who were born in Mexico and Central America. Dairy is no exception. Milking cows is a dirty, monotonous job that not a lot of Americans want to do. So most U.S. dairy farms rely on foreigners to fill entry-level positions in overnight shifts. The problem is dairy farms don't have a way to recruit immigrant workers legally because the government doesn't allow them to participate in the H-2A Agricultural Guest Worker Program. That program is for seasonal farm work only, not year-round work like milking. So since they can't get workers legally, most dairy farms hire immigrants illegally. Congress's refusal to create a guest worker program for dairy has New York farmers on edge. New York State is the country's top producer of Greek yogurt and third biggest producer of milk. But right in the middle of the state's most important dairy producing region is one of the largest immigrant detention facilities outside of Arizona. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE as the agency is known, and the Border Patrol agents who work along the sleepy U.S.-Canadian border have made it their mission to make sure that facility's beds stay full and all the undocumented farm workers in the area make for an easy way to fill their quotas. Dairy farmers near the immigrant detention facility are irate. With prospects for immigration reform dead for the foreseeable future, they constantly worry that their workers will be deported and that they won't have enough people to keep their cows milked, adding another layer of uncertainty to an already uncertain business. We went to upstate New York to try to understand the cat and mouse game that's going on between dairy farms and immigration authorities, a game that we as taxpayers fund. The first thing I wanted to know was whether there's actually any truth to farmers' claim that they can't find enough Americans to do entry-level milking work. So I decided to conduct a little experiment outside an unemployment office just a few minutes' drive from the immigrant detention center and a handful of dairy farms. Excuse me. You all looking for work? Kind of doing a little poll. Uh, are you looking for work right now? Yeah. Would you be interested in working on a dairy farm by chance? For milking or something? Yeah, milking parlor. From what time to what time? 2 a.m. to noon. Oh, it's a long shift in the middle of the night. 2 a.m. No, no, no. Okay. All right. Would you be interested in working on a dairy farm by chance? No, thank you. No. Um, not right now. It's not my kind of job. Yeah, I don't know about the farm, man. <laughs> okay. I did that when I was younger, and I don't want to do that again. <laughs> I'm a little, little skeptical about them kicking and stuff. So. Just messy, and I'm at an age where I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't got like a shitload of Mexicans willing to do that, huh? And they ship them all back to Mexico. Hey guys, can I ask you a quick question? I don't speak a lot, but. Uh, ¿Hablas español? Sí. Sí. It pays about nine dollars plus housing. Cool. Quiero preguntarle si querían trabajar en un, una lechería. Ah, uh, uh, sí, ahí trabajo mañana mismo. Sí. Sí. De dónde vienen? Yo de Puerto Rico. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Bye. These unemployed Americans' largely negative reactions to the idea of milking had me curious. So I found a farm that would let me work on it as long as I didn't reveal its name and location because it hires unauthorized workers and doesn't want to be targeted by ICE. When I arrived, I quickly realized that I had to forget about the romantic image of the old farmer milking a single cow into a bucket. Dairy farms these days, even family-owned farms, have to be big and efficient in order to stay competitive. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, hundreds if not thousands of cows are being herded into little rooms like this one to be hooked up to machines that pump the milk out. Has estado pegado porque son están nerviosos. Sí. 
Sí. Workers get kicked, they get shit on, and they do the same thing over and over again. So I've been doing this for about 10 minutes so far, and uh, I'd be very happy to maybe not be doing it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you want to go with her? <laughs> After about six or seven hours of milking hundreds of cows, the entire parlor is cleaned out. This means using a squeegee to remove all the cow manure from the parlor floor. Oh. Yeah. It is a trail of, of cow manure here that we're gonna sort of sweep down. After a while, it just starts to look like uh, Taco Bell. <laughs> The guys I worked with that day were good at their jobs. Some had been on the same farm for more than a decade, but they won't be working there much longer. Many of them are now in the process of being deported because they were rounded up in an ice raid a few months earlier. The owner of the farm told me that these guys are like family. He spoke to us on the condition of anonymity because he fears retribution from immigration authorities for speaking out. I am tired of the inaction in Washington. We're trying to run a business and day to day. We're the ones that are caught in the cross crosshairs of the, between the, the government that makes the laws and the other agency that has to enforce the laws. And yeah, the, the agency's enforcing, they're just doing their job. But we're also trying to run a business and the government has not given us a way to legitimately have an act, readily access source of laborers that, that work on the dairy farm. So what incentive is there to grow our business when um, at any given time all our labor can be taken away? The Department of Homeland Security refused our repeated request for an interview. But I spoke to Martin Heron, who worked for ICE from 1998 until he retired in 2011. He told me that deportation quotas became an increasingly high priority at ICE's regional headquarters in Buffalo during his tenure. I was the officer in charge at the Buffalo Federal Detention Facility in Batavia. Now, Buffalo, we're not like a facility down on the border, on the southern border. Buffalo's on the northern border. We don't have the large amount of uh, Hispanic and Mexican populations that they would have down south. So it was more difficult for Buffalo to achieve the numbers that they wanted. So Buffalo had to work a little harder to get them. And Buffalo had to become a little more um, inventive on, on ways to, to get the numbers up there. And that's removal numbers. How many were removed from the country so that so that it looked good. They, they wanted big numbers. We are the low-hanging fruit. It's very easy just to um, go onto a farm and look for people. Um, they have a facility they need to keep full. These people are very non-aggressive, non so um, if they're asked to go, they go. The Mexicans? The, the, yes, the Hispanics, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to, to get them. There's been instances at airports um, where people, the employer would be taking their people with a ticket in their hand ready to go back to their country and the ICE picks them up, picks them away and puts them in, in the jail. Just to get the number? Just to get the number. Wow. And who pays for all that? You and me. And yeah. every other taxpayer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of seems like a weird, yes. weird way to spend money. Yes. There's an interesting dynamic going on around these farms, I think. I'd agree. I'd agree. I, I, and I, I know the farmers would, they don't want uh, immigration nosing around. Um, they, uh, they just want to do their, you know, do their work and let these people do their work and get their products out. But while all of this is annoying to farmers and bad for business, the people who really get screwed by Congress's refusal to create a functioning legal immigration system are foreign workers themselves. Workers are getting stopped and questioned and detained with almost no provocation whatsoever. Brandon Mallory is a labor recruiter based out of Rochester, New York. He has worked closely with the agricultural community in upstate New York for 30 years. There's an immigration holding detention facility right in our backyard. One of the largest agricultural 
producing areas in the state. You have an <laughs> immigration detention center there. I'm not sure why it was put there, but um, I think they're, they're, they're determined to use it. This determination to use the detention center has created a climate of fear among Hispanics in Western New York. A climate of fear born from how immigration authorities and local police tend to target people while doing the simplest daily activities, like grocery shopping, going to church, or doing the laundry. Brian Hughes is an American who works on a dairy farm near Newfane, New York. The night before our interview, six of his Mexican co-workers were picked up by immigration authorities in a grocery store parking lot. We have an arrangement where um, a guy shows up with a vehicle and gives us a ride to go do our grocery shopping once a week. And that's all we were doing. I went, I went for the first trip, and all the way there, there's a trooper there and a sheriff there. I didn't think, we didn't think nothing of it. We made it all the way back. He loads up for a second group of guys to go back and do the same thing. He didn't make it back. He got pulled over, and he took six guys. And that's all they were doing was grocery shopping. They weren't breaking any laws. They have a lot to worry about. They just can't go to the store. They just, like, like what happened last night, they just can't go to the store. They have to have somebody go for them. They can't, they can't move freely, they can't. Jose Iniguez is a U.S. citizen who manages a farm in Waterport, New York. They go shopping at 11 o'clock at night because they, they were that afraid to go on the day. That's when the Border Patrol strikes during the day? Pretty much, because I mean, if you go at night, I mean, you don't put much attention. One guy go here, one guy there, but there's not much. But I mean, if you go in a car, four or five guys, you can, you can, uh -huh. can pull you over. I mean, a lot of times, they don't even leave the farm anymore, those guys. Somebody else shot for them. There's, they work sometimes 16 hours, and they hit to stay in the farm all the time. So, I mean, somebody, hey, can you bring me groceries? So, it's happened a lot. Unlike Arizona and a few other states, New York doesn't have a law that allows the local police to ask for the immigration papers of people they suspect of being in the country illegally. But a number of people who live near the detention center, both undocumented immigrants and native-born citizens of Hispanic descent, told us they've been asked for immigration documents during routine traffic stops. Tiburcio, for example, is in the country illegally. He doesn't have a driver's license, so he and some other Mexican guys pay a licensed driver to take them to work. One day, the car was pulled over by the local police while on their way to the farm. Pues el policía normalmente cuando paró el carro se dirigió al chofer, le preguntó licencia y pues él con él todo estaba bien. Incluso después pasó para atrás y dijo tus papeles y yo le digo lo único que tengo es un pasaporte mexicano. Se lo mostré y se los di y me dijeron bájate. Ya me esposaron y me pusieron atrás del carro. Y pues ya 20 minutos después llegó a migración. Me llevaron a la oficina de migración. Tiburcio paid $5,000 to get out of the detention center. He's now in the process of being deported back to Mexico after 16 years in the United States. He's married and has a child who's a U.S. citizen. Alexis is an undocumented dairy worker who's been in the U.S. for 10 years. He's married to Estella, a U.S. citizen by birth. Like Tiburcio, Alexis was asked for his immigration papers during a routine traffic stop. When he was taken into detention, the immigration authorities offered him a deal. Pues toda la gente de migración que iba entrando me iban haciendo preguntas, que dónde trabajaba, que si tenía más amigos y que si quería trabajar con ellos, que yo les entregaba más gente y me iban a dejar ellos libres y me iban a dar los papeles y le digo, "¿Sabe qué? Yo no puedo no puedo hacer eso, no por los papeles que tú me quieras dar, yo te voy a dar todos los mexicanos que yo conozco." It's not just undocumented workers who are being targeted while out in the community. Increasingly aggressive efforts to fill deportation quotas are also affecting Hispanics who are citizens or legal permanent residents. Being a black American, I mean, I'm obviously an American. Uh, I don't ever get stopped, you know, not, in, not questioned by immigration officials. I think I'm, I'm identified as, as an American. But there's many, many Hispanics in this country that are also Americans. There is no doubt that there's, there's racial profiling going on. I mean, this, this happens quite frequently. And of course, uh, the people that are doing it would never admit to such. I asked investigator Michael Nutto of New York State Police in Albion, New York, if he had any comment on accusations of racial profiling. He said, quote, I don't know of anyone out there who's specifically targeting these people. ICE and Border Patrol wouldn't talk to me, but I posed the racial profiling question to Martin Heron. Since he's been retired from ICE for three years, I was hoping he could speak about the issue more candidly. How can we ever say that we're not profiling? 
you know, it, especially if you're speaking uh, about, you know, somebody pulling over somebody uh, Hispanic or somebody who has an accent, uh, unofficially, I, I believe it, it would be profiling. I, I don't know how else you could do it. It's a dirty word, uh, profiling, because we're not, we can't profile, but you know, how do police do their work if they don't have some kind of an edge, mm -hmm. so. It's not fair to treat them, treat them like that. And um, uh, the, it's not the farmer, and it's not the Mexican, it's the government. They're the ones that set, the, set this game up to, wait, to be as it is. Yeah, you're right. I'm right, ain't I? <laughs> it's the government. Yeah. They're the ones that draw the line in the sand. They're the ones that call them a criminal. They're supplying, they're supplying, they're supplying no more la labor than what's needed. I used to complain, I says, you know, they're taking American jobs. They're not taking anything that's not just laying there. Dan Wolf is a dairy farmer who used to employ unauthorized workers. A couple years ago, the two Mexican guys who worked his overnight milking shift were stopped by the local police. The police then called the border patrol who detained them. Dan suddenly found himself without an overnight milking crew, wondering how he was gonna get his cows milked. So if you don't have a reliable human labor force, what's the alternative? It's one, go out of business. Mm -hmm. The other one, find ways to adapt equipment and so forth that maybe can help do some of those things. Dan then showed me exactly how he's adapted to his labor uncertainty problem and the immigration reform stalemate in Washington. And just beyond this room, is the milking area, which is a very different kind of milking area than we've seen at other farms. Instead of having a milking parlor where all the cows are herded in at once and there are people putting the suction cups on the udders, Dan has a fully robotic farm here where the cows come into this area and then the robot sort of works its magic after that. Yes, once it knows that the cow's in there by her weight on the platform, then it starts its process of moving underneath remembering the coordinates of where it found the teats the last time, and then attaching the teacups to begin the milking. There's a device that scans for off-color and for conductivity. Of the milk. Of the milk. Oh, wow. And, and if it's unsaleable, it dumps it. Is this running 24 hours a day? It shuts down twice a day to wash. Dan had five Mexican employees before he got the robotic milkers but he's been able to let them go because the robots do just about everything on the farm. Dan is relieved that he solved his labor uncertainty problem, but it came at a pretty high price. Each robot costs $250,000 and can only handle about 50 cows per day. So to go fully robotic as Dan has, large farms are looking at an upfront investment of about one to $2 million, which explains why only about 1% of dairy farms in New York State have gone even partially robotic. Nothing any more satisfying in any job particularly even for us in agriculture. Great people that want to be part of the action and what you're doing. Uh, but when you can't find them, uh, you have to decide, is this the business that we want to have the kind of money we've got invested in at risk? Because if you don't do it right, uh, profitability turns around overnight. But this is the choice that dairy farms are having to make. Employ immigrants and risk losing your labor force or mortgage the farm and invest millions in robots. Neither choice seems ideal. But why don't dairy farms just raise wages so they can attract American workers? Well, for one, dairy farms have thin margins and milk markets are notoriously unstable. So doubling or tripling the wage for milkers from their current level of $9 to $11 per hour would put many family-owned farms at risk or in the red. Doubling or tripling wages paid to entry-level workers would also force farms to raise the salaries of management positions, which tend to be held by Americans. Farms would need to earn more for their products in order to cover these higher labor costs. But dairy farms are what economists call price takers, meaning that they have little control over the amount that they're paid for their products. Meanwhile, taxpayers are paying on average $12,500 to deport workers who do a dirty, smelly job that most of us prefer not to do no matter what it pays. Once deported, some of these people turn right around and return to work illegally in the United States. What will happen to your wife if you are deported? No tendría nada que llegar a hacer a México, pues mi familia está aquí. Entonces, a como diera el lugar, yo tendría que volver a regresar. Ahorita, como está la situación, ¿te animarías a, a volver a cruzar? Pues es una pregunta 
muy difícil de responder, pero cuando, cuando algunas personas pasan por esto, por esta situación, hablando de tu familia, de tu, no te importa nada más allá ni cómo vayas a pasar, tu mente es llegar a ver a tu familia, no importa cómo vas a pasar, pero vas a pasar. Entonces, es una gran, gran pregunta y difícil de responder, porque yo no sé si voy a pasar, yo no sé si pueda pasar, pero en mi mente no me digo eso, sino yo me digo voy a pasar. No sé cómo, entonces mi prioridad es volver a venir, no importa. My opinion on immigration is it, it, it's a battle that cannot be won. That at some, some point we are going to have to come up with whether it's an official or an unofficial amnesty. Uh, this is something that can't be stopped. Especially uh, with, with the Hispanics, I feel it's just a migration for these people. Migration north. And if you're standing on one side of the street and you've got nothing and you look over on the other side of the street and they've got everything, To me, it's just common sense. Why can't I cross the street? If we had a legal immigration system that was consistent with our country's economic needs, farmers wouldn't have to hide their faces like hardened criminals, farm workers wouldn't have to seclude themselves on their farms, and we as taxpayers wouldn't have to spend billions of dollars deporting peaceful people who do a job even unemployed Americans don't want to do. Congress has the ability to fix all of this. In June 2013, two-thirds of the Senate voted in favor of a bipartisan immigration bill that among other things would give American farms a way to recruit foreign workers legally. However, Republicans in the House of Representatives allowed the bill to die without bringing it up for a vote. So for the foreseeable future, our milk, cheese, ice cream, butter, and yogurt will continue to come from the labor of people who have no way to enter the U.S. legally, who essentially have no rights or legal protections, and who have to worry about being apprehended any time they leave the house. This absurd, unjust system is easy enough to fix. It will just take a little courage from Congress to do so.